Thanks everyone for joining. Now we are inside day number 18. And uh, today we are going to learn about one of the other policy, one of the data policy that is application aware routing policy. And if time permits, then we'll go and discuss about quality of service as well. This is one of the localized type of policy. So let's focus on application aware routing policy first. And later on, I will check that uh, QS policy and rest of the localized policies. Okay. So what is application aware routing policy and how it is possible in first place? Now you may know that uh, due to this evolution of uh, SD-WAN and SDN networking, what happened that uh, we can go and create policy not only based on network information, but based on application information as well. Why? Because all these devices, either it's a C edge or V edge, within these devices, they have something called uh, some sort of engine. And at the moment you can think as an bar. So they have network based application recognition engine within them. That means with that particular engine, whenever any traffic is hit, hitting to those devices, they come to know about the app ID, application ID. Sometimes it is referred as a metadata of application. So somehow they will understand that which application is flowing through that particular device. Now, according to that, we can go and create certain policy. So what does it mean? We can go and create a list of applications, say app one. And this application, we can tie with some sort of SLA, say SLA one and SLA two. That means that my policy will tell if SLA one is meeting, that's good. Forward the traffic via MPLS. If SLA one is not meeting the criteria, then redirect this application traffic via other link and other link may be internet or maybe any other default link. So as per the term and condition, you will find that the rule is very simple. What we are doing that we are, we are creating policy based on application, right? So that means that we can go and group these policies based on different different uh, containers or app ID. And according to that, we can map with SLA and SLA, again, it can take action that you, you have to go via this link or this link. Now, the biggest question here is this, that uh, how, what's the mechanism inside SD-WAN that, that can go and collect the information about these application. That means it will go and uh, track the SLA service level agreement like loss, latency, jitter, etc. So SLAs are nothing but we are creating, uh, we are binding some sort of information related to loss, latency or jitter. That means for example, if the latency is more than 100 millisecond. So somehow traffic is flowing via the circuit and latency is more than 100 millisecond. That means it is not meeting the SLA criteria. So in that case, we can go and take action. It means the policy can go and take action. So rather than sending via path one, you can redirect this to path two, maybe internet or something, right? Now the question here is this, that in SD-WAN, what mechanism we have that can go and track the SLA? right that can go and check that the application glued with sla how they can go and change the path etc before that they have to, somehow they have to go and uh, they have to invalidate the uh, matching criteria or sla should be invalidated right so answer is one word answer is this that bft bidirectional forward detection is the mechanism via which it can go and detect the applications and 
applications plus the loss latency detail associated with that application. So how it is happening? Again, it's it's behind the scene. It's very simplified. So how it is happening? We know that uh, whenever we have application, obviously this application will travel from one edge device to other edge device, and in between you have multiple circuits. There is no problem. But we know that these applications, they are going inside the IPsec tunnel. So you may have different type of IPsec tunnels via which these applications are flowing. And we know from our theoretical section is this, that at the moment you go and bring up, so at the moment inside SD-WAN, the tunnels are up. They are being tracked by bi-directional forward detection BFDs. So BFD and BFD, you will see that they have different type of mechanisms via which these packets, so these actually, these uh, uh, these packets inside the tunnel, BFD will go and track. So you will uh, you will go and see different type of BFD uh, variations. We have like BFD hello packets, BFD multipliers, BFD, uh, we'll see that bucket and inside that bucket what uh, average value we have different different uh, different type of things we have i will show you in in few slides and means maybe maybe after 5 10 minutes you'll understand that how bft is tracking how bft how we are taking the sampling of bft uh, to to take the average uh, average samples of these applications to uh, to take decision that it has to go via this path or this path. Okay, I'm going to show you all those things. But before reaching there, we know that we have centralized policy, we have localized policy. Centralized policy that means CAE configure, apply, and execute. If CAE will happen at the rate of VS Smart, that will be control policy. If you do C and A with respect to VS Smart and execution with respect to VS, that will be centralized policy, but that will be centralized data policy, right? Again, we have localized policy as well. Later on, we are going to discuss about that. Access list and QS are example of localized policy. We'll check that later on. Okay, so let's focus on, uh, first of all, this application aware routing and how things are happening behind the scene. Uh, in this diagram, we'll understand that, okay, you have applications, so application one, that is going from one location to other location, obviously within the IPsec tunnel, right? So that application will automatically glued with BFD. And now BFD will go and measure the one way and round trip loss latency jitter. So how it is? Uh, it's very simple, see, uh, I am A and other side B, okay? So I am A here, right? And then Jitender is side B, for example. Now, I am sending packet from A to B. Maybe it is taking two seconds and obviously these things are in milliseconds. So uh, maybe it is taking 200 millisecond, for example. And when B is responding me, maybe that time it took 150 millisecond. So clearly you can see that there is a round trip timer variation. So overall average will be 200 plus 150 divided by two. But if you if you see that if you're uh, if you're 200 seconds, if this is the baseline or this is the standard to deliver a packet, and suppose next time if you are using 250 millisecond, that means you are deviating by 50 milliseconds, right? So like that, they are measuring the one way or round tip loss latency and jitter. And according to that, with the policy, we can take action that we have to go via this circuit or this circuit. Okay. Now, uh, we know that BFD, the hello timer for BFD is one second that we know from our previous uh, discussions and knowledge. And this is, all these things are configurable. Means we can go and change the BFD, hello timer, date timer, etc. By default, it is one second. So it can go and give you one way loss latency jitter information. Uh, 
until unless we'll go and do the samples. Okay, so if you want to calculate the average value for the application SLA, so for that we have to go and take the samples. And here you can see that 600, oh, sorry for that. So here you can see that we have 600 BFD. 600 BFD means a sample of 10 minutes because in one minute you have 60 seconds. So one minute you have 60 seconds means you are taking the samples for 10 minutes. And let me show you this. So this is something like this that <clears throat> Starting with zero to 600, uh, you're sending, receiving the BFD. You're sending, receiving the BFD. You're sending, receiving the BFDs. BFD, BFD, like 600 BFD, right? So 600 BFD, uh, if you go and uh, plot that diagram, you'll find that maybe few BFD round trip, sending, receiving less, few maybe more, less, more, less, more, etc. Then again, you have to go and take the average. So whatever samples that we have calculated, whatever 600 samples that we have created, according to that, we can take the average or mean of that 600. And then it will be our average loss latency jitter, LLJ, right? And according to that, again, uh, the policy can go and take the decision but your story is not ending here uh, what is happening that these devices have one other thing as well called multiplier so think like this that uh, you have something called parallel processing think like this that you have a multiplier of six one two three four and we can increase, decrease those multipliers. You have six uh, multiplier. Six multiplier means that you may have at the moment six different samples for average value or six different samples for BFDs. You have six different samples for BFD. And according to these, six different samples of BFD. Again, you can go and calculate the mean or the average loss latency jitter. What we can do, if we don't want that much complexity, we can go and change this multiplier to one or maybe zero, zero means default. So we can go and change this multiplier to one. That means whatever samples we are creating, for 60 seconds, uh, sorry, for 600 seconds, that will become our average loss latency and zitter. Okay, so these are the theory behind the scene. All these items we can go and configure it. We can go and type BFT app route multiplier. We can change it. Apart from that, we can see here that uh, we have BFD app route, all interval, and we can go and change it. Then we have option to change the BFD color. I have one summary slide here. You can see that we can go. Uh, so you have a hello date timer. I mean, so you have hello timer of one second. Then you have polling interval of uh, 10 minutes taking the samples. Then you can see that you have multiplier. Default multiplier is six. It is one to one through six. Great. The last thing about this policy that this is the only positive policy we have. That means that if you go and apply this policy as a data policy, by default, all the policy in the Steve and Webtela, the default statement is block. This is the only policy. By the end of this policy, it will tell, okay, allow, or this is a positive policy. Okay, so this is the theory related to app aware routing. Now, how to create this policy? I will go and create this policy and I will show you. But you should understand related to whatever policies we have created, everything is okay. Only two new things you will find here. One is that we have to go and create the application list called app list. And second thing that we have to go and create is the SLA criteria.
like you have to define loss latency jitter you have to go and create application list like what is your interesting traffic you're writing the policy to right which is the application you want to write the policy for so those things we have to define rest each everything is straightforward we have to go and define the list we have to go and define the sla class then we can go and create one data policy called app route policy um, these data policies are applicable to VPN, applicable to site. Then we can go inside the app route policy. We can match the action. So you can go and take the action. Preferred color, uh, if you want to stick it. So this is very interesting thing is this, that suppose you have HTTPS traffic. Now HTTPS traffic, you want to send via MPLS link. And then uh, you may fall back to internet with some default configuration. But suppose you don't want to send your HTTPS traffic via internet because you are assuming that it is not secure or it is, it is, uh, it is always worse than what MPLS we have. It's not good, for example. Then if you want to stick with MPLS always, either MPLS link is up or down, then you can go and use the keyword called strict. So that means that you are not doing any type of load balancing failover, et cetera. You're sticking this application, either SLA is meeting the criteria or it's breaching the criteria. All the time we are preferring MPLS. That's the meaning of strict. Okay, and rest of the things you will understand. Well, I'll go and create the policy. So let's go and create the policy and uh, I will go create this policy and I will apply this policy. Then, uh, wow, I have this example here. Then I will go and uh, show you that if the policy will not match, then it will change the path. All these things you can verify as well, okay? So what we'll do, we'll go and create some, some SLA you can see on your screen. So you can see SLA called web. Latency 100, SLA for voice video latency 50, but you have option, I will show you. Loss, latency, and jitter. All these three options you have, you can give here. I have given only one, but we have option to give all these options, uh, all these loss, latency, jitter parameters. Then we'll go and create the policy. We'll call the app list, but we have to create the app list as well. So you will see this in the, in the list section that we have app list so HTTPS. I'll go and map with the web and webmail. Then I'll go and create a SIP app, right? I, I'm going to follow whatever policy you are seeing here in this example. Likewise, you can also create, but you always have option that you can create big, big, big policy. You can take good amount of application. Now, how many application that Envar or the sd devices can match? So they uh, they can match up to i think uh, maybe 2 to 3000 applications in the in the in their application recognition engine they they can match up to that but you can you can check the uh, document here i think it is 2300 in this document but uh, <clears throat> but the number is more Ranne? So it's only like HTTPS based it or like it's a like application like uh, I have a mail or I have some uh, other application. So application wise name we can put or only. Yeah. Like so with the we, have, or we have two things here. Uh, we, we can map with application and we can map with application family. So both the options are here. Let me show you it is there in the slide. Some will find that I have. Uh, Clearly shown that we can go and match on this of application. Yeah, here you can see application name and application family. So once you go and match the application family, uh, for example, if I go and map uh, YouTube. So with respect to YouTube, all uh, application inside YouTube will come into the picture. For example, Facebook. So inside Facebook, we may have 20 different applications like Facebook chat, Facebook video, Facebook Etc. Etc. So all those twenties will match, you know, because we are calling so, the application family. So when you are mentioning YouTube, so it will come under the application name, right? 
I will show you that. You will understand. All right. Okay. So let's go and create this policy. Let me show you this. You'll understand. It's not a big thing. That we will not follow. Mm, where is the lab? Is this okay? Set up. Important document share link CLA. Okay, I'll I'll show you that uh, your question. I'm going to answer that. Let me connect to the uh, VPN. What is this? Okay, and then go here. It's not, it's not. Uh... Correct IP. Let's go to the correct IP. Uh, I think this is the correct. Okay, let's go here. Okay. And so we are inside our uh, we manage dashboard. Let me see. Okay, we are here. So you can go to the configuration and policies, right? I think this is age. Okay, it's there. What we want to do, we want to create some policy. So we can go and click add policy. Now you will see here inside application. See what options we have. So inside application, you can see application list, custom application, cloud discovered application. Application, inside application list, you can see, if I go and click, see we have two options, application and application family. Now you can uh, you can ask your question, what you're asking? If you put you, YouTube, it will come under application or application family? Okay, that's a good question. So you can click here to the search bar, YouTube. It's coming under application. Application family, we have list of this. Let's check in the, no, it's not there inside application family. Inside application family, you have very uh, less number of uh, things. Yeah. Okay, database, ERP, audio, video, etc., etc. So it is coming under application. Okay. Like that you can check. Let's go and create that policy. So uh, let's go back here. Let me see. Where is my slide app route policy? Yes, this one. Yeah, it is gone. Mm -hmm here okay so we want to create one policy where we want to create a certain app list so app list related to uh, we can give any name https but we are matching web webmail why we are matching this because inside this lab you will find that we have some simulated traffic going on and for those traffic uh, there are some tool inside this that we can go and increase or decrease the um, I think we can increase, decrease the zitter. We have that option. We can do some emulation. I'll show you that. And then we can test the change in the path, uh, A to B or A to C like that. So let's go here and create some application list. So HTTPS list. And then we can go and search. So I can go and search web. Uh, web mail or something 
some web mail is coming. Let's see what we are getting here. Or if I go and check email or something. Gmail is there, Hotmail is there. Great. And then HTTP. What HTTP services we have? Video over HTTP, audio over HTTP, etc., etc. I'm not seeing here what I'm looking for. Let me go to the family. And I can see web. Web mail. Actually, creating with respect to application family, not application. So we are not mapping one application. We are checking this application family. Now, if I go here and check. So with web, I'm getting this. HTTPS is not there. It's okay. Let's stick with whatever we have in the <clears throat> PPT. Later on, we'll, we can go and add extra as well. So then I want to add one, add one more. This time, um, video, audio, something like that. Video and audio application family. Audio video family. And then we have actually simulated SIP traffic. The SIP is not there. It will fall under audio video by default itself. Okay, great. So we have the we have two application list here we have created. One we have created for HTTPS like web and web mail. Other we have created for audio video. And our application name is, so let's see that was the name of our app. I think it is in bottom. I created one video audio and I created one HTTPS list. These two I have created, okay? Now, so once you have this list, what you need? You have to go and create some sort of SLA class, okay? Now, for SLA class, let's go and add our SLA class. So name of the SLA class list. Uh, first application we have HTTP list SLA. Now you can see loss, latency, jitter, and some probing as well. App probe, uh, probe class. So loss, I will go and give 50. Latency also I can go and give some 50. Jitter I'll leave it. Jitter is nothing but uh, variation in latency, right? So uh, let's leave it Jitter at the moment, but you understand like that you can create. And I can go and create one more uh, video, audio, SLA. These are our SLA that we are creating. Video, audio, maybe 10 seconds. They are very much uh, uh, latency sensitive applications that we have this video and audio. So we have two. And you can see that name HTTP, uh, HTTP list SLA and video audio SLA, right? So now we have the application list. Now we have the SLA list. Then what we want? We want to create the actual policy where we can go and take action, right? So we can go next because all these VPNs and everything we have. We don't need to create VPN and site ID, etc. All the other list we have. We know from this page that this is for control policy. Next, you can see clearly app route policy. Let's go and add app route policy. I'll give the name. This is for HTTPS and audio, video, policy, video, policy, something like that. You can give any logical name. All right, let's go and click the sequence type. See app route, sequence rule, what we want to do. 
So once you are inside this uh, policy, uh, match the VPN, match the app list. So for audio video, what you want? You want to take action and you want to give the uh, primary link as a MPLS and the backup as an internet. And you're mapping with the SLA, whatever SLA we have. It's very straightforward. What you want to match? We want to match the application. What were ours? Our application say this time I'll go and match with the video and audio application that we have. So this is the application I want to match. Then once we have the application, what we want to do, right? Simply match the application, this, this part we are matching. And then we have to take the action and then we have the default action, right? We're doing like uh, mad. So what do you want? You want to uh, match the SLA class. So for this, the SLA class is video white voice video SLA, right? What is preferred color? So my preferred color is MPLS. Now here, it's very important. So now you can see that when SLA are not met, you want to drop it. You want to fall back means the SD man will take decision. You want to do load balancing. By default, you can see it's a load balancing. But when SLA will not match, okay? So a strict, a strict either you want to use the same circuit or you want to drop it. Means if obviously if your MPLS is down, it will drop it, right? But you are, you are using this strict keyword. At the moment, I'll not use uh, these keywords, but uh, what I want, I want to add backup SLA as well. So let's go here and add the backup as a internet. Later on, I'll explain you what it is. So we have one particular uh, application and SLA and the policy related to that. Then we can go and add one more. This time we'll go and match the application related to HTTPS. So we have HTTPS to, that we have created list. And then uh, what we want to do with this, we can go and take the action. Inside the action, what you, what action you want to take. So action is SLA class list. Now this also I will map with the, uh, I'm sorry for that. What was our SLA for HTTP? We have something. Uh, we have something called HTTPS SLA, something like that. So let's search the SLA, SLA. this is our SLA. And then the preferred color here also, I want to prefer MPLS. And by any case, if you want to stick with it, just to show you that you have option to stick or uh, what you can do, fall back to the best path or what you can do that uh, you not use any of these option. Otherwise, on top, you're not getting the backup option. Right, so okay, we have two variation. In one variation, we have taken the backup, that means backup path, and other variation, we are not uh, using that SLA backup. Now then, I told you that this is the only uh, policy that will be positive by default. So you can see that by default, let's go back here, so the default action. You can see that default action is not showing you accept or reject because default action means allow everything, whatever available bandwidth you have, right? You don't want to, you don't want to stop your application, right? You always want it will be delivered. So either via your policy or if this policy will not match, then default is allow all. Great, save the application. Save this policy, go next. What is the next step we have? The next step we have is this to apply this policy. Apply. 
So you can give the name and you can click to app aware routing. Obviously you have to apply to the VPN and the site list. So I'll go and use uh, all branch and all DC which means I want to apply this everywhere. And the VPN I want to use VPN 10 and VPN 20. I think both are same. At 10 and 20. Add. Now if you go and click preview, you will see that it's a very big policy that we have created. See how, how many lines it has. It's too big. And now you can see inside HTTPS family what applications we have. Instant messaging, application service, database, ERP, web, audio, like that. Inside audio video, we have app family, audio video, app family, audio video. Great. So now I can save this policy. Rodness? Yep. There is no E now to be applied here huh, in this case. Yeah, I told you earlier that data policy is something that is. is... Data policy not available. Yeah, oh, yeah. perfect. Okay. Yeah. So yep. let me oops, let me quickly see that how many devices we have. It seems that we have all five devices live. So what we can do here is this that we can go and activate this policy. Let's do activate this policy. So it will go to the VSmart from VSmart. This will go and push to all the edge devices because we are applying this to everywhere. So let me go and open that document. In this uh, document, I have given some verification command as well. So you can go and check show policy, service path, show policy, uh, tunnel path, uh, app uh, visibility sh uh, should be enabled, but you can go and check show app DPI application, show app DPI supported applications, etc. So there are a good amount of CLI commands as well that you can go and check. Now let me go and increase the font size. So here we are. Okay. So what you can do, first of all, you can go and check show policy from VSmart because this is the data policy. So you can see it is downloaded. Policy is downloaded, right? You have that policy downloaded here. That's the one thing. Then you can go and check show. What was that app? The CLI command, what was that? Show policy, service path and all those things. So that also you can do, but you can do this DPI as well. You can check the supported applications. These many applications are supported more than 2000 or 3000 in between. Then you can go and check uh, show DPI flows, right? And VPN 10. See, now it is recognizing that which, from which channel to which channel, which application is flowing. You can see we have audio video as well somewhere. We have RTP application somewhere, right? But, uh, what we want, we want to check the SLA attached with it, right? So show policy and uh, service path. Policy, service path, VPN 10. Oh, this is big command. I'll show you this command later on. But uh, what I want here, I just wanted to see that uh, which particular circuit having what uh, amount of loss latency jitter, right? Let me see if I have that command here. Um, I think maybe show policy tunnel path, show policy service path is very big command, we'll leave it. Now, I'll go and check show policy tunnel path, let's see. Show So policy, channel path. Okay, so this is also a big command. It will not work like that. It will go continue, it will continue, 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 you know, these commands. 
I, I will show you this command output in maybe 10, 15 minutes. But at the moment, I just wanted to show you that, okay, now you have devices, right? So you have devices. I have two devices. One is here and other one is here. Now I want to see the loss latency jitter over these tunnels, right? You should see loss latency jitter. If loss latency jitter will be high over these tunnels, then only they will alter the path, right? Otherwise, there is no need. Even otherwise, there is no need of these uh, application level routing policies as well. So let me go and try to figure out that from where we can go and check that. Show app, let's see. DPI. Summary. Is, this is telling you how many flows and all, but I want to know the detail about everything. So applications. This is again, this is also good output, but this is again not telling you that uh, which particular application is using which channel and what's the loss latency jitter parameters, right? So uh, I will go one step back. Instead of checking these, we can go and check uh, the older command. So tunnel stats. EFT. Let's check the stat. Show tunnel stat, what it is telling that uh, can see here uh what's the source tunnel or the destination tunnel system ip remote color uh, the transit packets over those tunnels but uh, still this command is not telling you about inside this tunnel which application is going on right so let's check the detail one let's go and verify that show policy tunnel VPN 10 interface interface source IP suppose the source IP is its system IP 10.4.0.1 and then destination IP maybe it's going towards the data center whose system IP is 10.1.0.1 protocol uh, let's check the udp protocol whose port number is 17 all so if uh, uh, we are checking the protocol 17 is udp flow so it is telling that you have total four flows from 2.6 to 3.2.30 0 0.26 to 0 0.2 2.6 to 2.16 0 0.26 to 0 0.6. Uh, you can see that few flows using internet, few flows using MPLS. Now, if I'm very much specific to any of the application, so here you can go and give the app. And if we are looking for RTP, yeah, RTP audio video. Why I'm using RTP? Because this is part of family audio video and we have created policy related to audio video so what it is telling that your tunnel this let's see show interface description 26026 going to this is um data center let's go here and check show interface description the so font size is very, very small, but uh, you will see, let's see what's IP. I think this one, 164.2.26. Now this is 0 0.6, let's see where is 0 0.6. Now this is not DC1 then. Let's go to um, DC1 VS2. Show interface description, yeah, 0 0.6 and Show run uh, VPN zero interface gigi 
zero slash mod interface is this this is mpls so from remote side so you can see with this output it is telling that uh, rtp traffic flow is from branch to this ip and this ip belongs to this particular interface sure and vpn zero interface interface gigi zero slash one let's see that interface so this interface is mpls so both place we have mpls so what it is telling that uh, rtp traffic going from this branch mpls to this branch or this data center mpls circuit okay now still i i am not seeing loss latency jitter information so let's try to check that show app route and states i think this is the command which will tell you the information about loss latency jitter so now you can see um what was that circuit a circuit was 26 to 0 0 uh 26 to 2 like that you can memorize okay so 26 to 2 <clears throat> see 26 to 2 this first one so if i copy this particular command it's very important to understand everything from here if you go here and let me highlight try to highlight so this particular configuration that you have you should understand each and everything related to this, right? So it is telling that source and destination having MPLS circuit, right? And they have the SLA defined. We'll understand about this SLA. We have created SLAs. They have multiplier of one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is nothing but six multiplier. That means you have six different different category inside single category you are sampling 600 bft right so single category whatever uh, you are seeing an index or single index having 600 bft inside that and inside each particular bucket that we have you can see that what's the percentage of loss latency and gta as zero 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 means it's an ideal situation and that's why the traffic that we have, and this is not the circuit, by the way. Circuit is 0 0.6, right? So it's the circuit. You can see clearly in our configuration, this is 0 0.6 because that was DC1 uh, edge or DC1 device 2 or router 2. We should, first of all, reach to that circuit. Uh, yeah, this is correct. This is correct. This is the correct circuit. We should check that. So from my MPLS to other side MPLS, this is the remote IP. And you can see loss latency jitter. Everything is zero, zero, zero. So that's why if you go and check the path, either tunnel path or service path, uh, and we should not give this IP as a remote. We should give IP remote IP as this. So it is going via MPLS because uh, here you have zero 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 loss latency everything. So now what we'll do we'll go back to the system here And we'll find that here one tab is van Impaired impairment something means you can go and create some sort of loss loss latency jitter. So I'll go to DC one for MPLS I'll go and increase the Loss latency jitter so now if you go back here and if you go and check the app status you'll see that all of sudden within this circuit loss latency jitter will start picking up so give this emulation some time and you can see and other circuits also i can see but anyways we are focusing on 26 to 06 this circuit and i can see that latency is increasing now if we go and check the path 
so it is going via internet this is our backup right yeah actually block is coming i okay you can see here the path got changed now the same traffic is going via internet why because here you can see that uh, lost latency jitter not in this circuit range but in this circuit range let me highlight uh, 0 06 to 26 to 6 yeah this so here you can see loss latency jitter is increasing actually the latency is increasing and as per our rule it will go and change the circuit now if we go back let me show you this output one more time so you can see still it is going via internet and it, even you can see that they have changed their path so now it is going from 2.6 to 2.30 because uh, they are not preferring mpls now they are preferring internet path now if you go back here and if you go and remove the latency that means suppose in circuit you don't have latency you will see that it will start going via mpls because at the moment the loss latency jitter will become less than 100 they will change the path and then you can see that instead of uh, internet it will go and start using the MPLS. Let me quickly go and check first of all latency is decreasing or not. You can see now it is decreasing. Yeah, it is decreasing. So that means that it will go and change the path. See MPLS. Right. All right. So you can see the power of application aware routing and the policies that we have created. Since we have learned about the build up of policy and all those different different aspects to create this app route policy it took less than uh, 25 30 minutes or maybe 40 minutes. But if you have to create this policy for a projection environment, it may take weeks or months because then you have to go and collect all the applications, then you have to take the routing decision per application, then you have to take design decision, everything right. So it will take some time in real production to uh, add all those applications and take decision on, on basis of that. Okay. Uh, Ramesh, this is for RTB, right? Same way I can put a app or HTTP also, right? So yeah, to... yeah, yes, yes, yes. You can collect all these applications and, you know, you can put it and this may solve any of your use case, right? And uh, you're creating that time application application family, right? Under which setting can you yeah. show the setting? So if you go to the lab section, so there are two things, application itself and app family. App family means you are taking entire family consideration that uh, Cisco is grouping for us. So if you are here, and if you go to the list, You can see that uh, you have application and uh, you can see that we have option. Uh, here, you, if you search with Office 365 coming. Yeah, it will come obviously. 365 because that's known application. Inside application, Office 365. Uh, and WebEx coming, WebEx. WebEx, let's search uh, WebEx. WebEx is Cisco project, 100% it will come. WebEx, WebEx video, WebEx media, WebEx control, audio applications. Right. And these are local policy, right? Uh, you are saying. These are centralized policy. Hmm. These are local policy means only on the box. Uh, centralized data policy means you are pushing from VSmart. But these are local policy, in other words. These are like executing in the box, right? Yes. So these are like a local policy. It's up to us that exactly which particular box we are executing. Once it is executed, they are very much local, yes. Localized data policy. Localized. This is centralized data policy, not localized. Okay. So if we have a centralized control policy already and the other, some other condition is said and you're creating this policy so 
it will supersede that centralized yes. control control policy yes yes data policy always has preference than any other policy because it is near to the box near box policies are always has a higher preference okay all right so knowing this thing let's take a break for um 10 minutes because next topic i want to start is qs and before starting that particular topic let's take a break otherwise it will be too much so what i will do for qs is this that today i will go and understand the concepts of qs that will be applicable for our st van viptela i will not show you the policy today because that may be too much for today's session. Uh, we'll check the policies, QS and remaining centralized, uh, remaining localized policy, few of the policy in upcoming sessions. Okay, so let's try to understand the concept of quality of service. The quality of service itself is a big topic. And if you go and check some of the books or some of the Cisco Live documents, you'll find that Maybe they, they have written 500 to 600 pages just to understand the quality of service. It's a huge, big topic, right? Now, if you if you check Cisco hardware, you'll find that different type of hardware. So catalyst switches, they have different type of quality of service hardware structure. Then uh, Cisco devices, Cisco routers, they have different type of quality of service hardware architecture. Nexus switches, they have different. There's different, different hardware platforms. They have different type of quality of service structure because very much this quality of service depends upon the hardware as well. Means inside that particular hardware, how much uh, uh, buffer you have for different, different traffics. Okay. Here also we will understand QS. This no no big thing, big thing, big deal to understand QS. But behind the scene, scene itself, QS is a very big topic. Okay, and is I will go and explain you about this QS applied in Cisco Viptel SD WAN. But if you are interested, uh, you can check. So there are so many good documents related to quality of service. Okay, so let's start. Quality of service, why we need, first of all, what's the requirement? So, requirement is like this, that uh, if you have some sort of congestion, right? If you, if, you, if you want to prioritize certain traffic, then you can go and use quality of service. In other words, if there is no congestion, uh, there is no requirement of QS. But if there is no congestion, so there is one exception. If there is no congestion and your network is not designed properly, you will face a latency, you will face slowness. Okay, so there is no option for poor network design. If your network, if your network is not designed properly, obviously the user experience will be not good. Either we are using WAN or ST WAN. Okay. All right, so what are the key components of quality of service? Anyone knows what are the things we have in QS quality of service? Plasma policy map and you have to apply the policy, right? Yeah, so quality of service class map policy, right? And we can go and apply the policy and that's right. But quality of service itself have so many different uh, categories, you know? Uh, categories means that you want to do some sort of uh, congestion avoidance. That means that uh, you will go and assume that congestion will happen. And then what do you want to do to prevent from congestion, just to avoid the congestion, right? I mean, you can give some example for that, what we can do for congestion avoidance. Yes. 
congestion avoidance. If I if I get some document related congestion avoidance, right? So if I have something that I can show you quickly, you will understand that for congestion avoidance, you can see one of the example here. For congestion avoidance, we can go and use red. Random early detection or W red is the weighted random early detection. So what it will do, you can think like this that it will go and randomly drop certain packets before it, it has some congestion. The concept is like this. Okay. So if I have some other as well, so I can show you the examples related to congestion avoidance. Okay. But you, you understood that, right? That uh, randomly you are dropping the packet. Suppose if there is congestion, then how packet drop will happen? So generally that packet drop is something uh, using FIFO, first in, first out like this. That means, oh no, not FIFO, sorry for that, my bad. So congestion, so suppose, let me try to draw. Suppose you have this big pipe and you're sending the traffic, right? Now, if there is congestion, packet will get dropped, right? Because there is congestion in the circuit. Then by default, what the systems are doing, what this hardware is doing, that uh, they start dropping the packet and default is tail drop. So from here, congestion is there. At the moment congestion will come, it will start dropping few packets. That term is nothing but tail drop. You're dropping the tail, right? You start dropping the last packets, that's the tail. But suppose if you have congestion avoidance applied, so when, you when your packets are coming, some small packets, some big packet, etc. Uh, you are checking the classification of packet, like packet is normal packet. Maybe it's uh, that packet is inside default queue or something. That packet, if you go and draw a few of the packet before coming and getting this tail drop, right? Dropping here, you are, do uh, you are doing the tail drop for the important traffic as well. Before doing that, you can go and apply some sort of RAID, random early detection. So it will, before coming to that, uh, uh, egress interface, this out interface, it will drop those packets. But obviously there are some mechanism algorithm behind this. You can go and use RAID either or you can go uh, use uh, weighted RAID. So this is nothing but congestion avoidance. This is one of the term inside QS. Avoid the congestion with, uh, before it, it is happening. Then we have something called congestion management. You know the examples related to congestion management. So let me quickly do the same thing. Uh, congestion management. Let's see the pictures. So what congestion management is telling that uh, data traffic is, uh, it should be congestion management. So yeah, that's, that's true. This is example of con congestion management that uh, you are using some sort of scheduler Okay, uh, and I don't know if you are understanding this class based based weighted fair queuing means what you are doing, you are doing some sort of classification of traffic, traffic classification. So you are doing classification of traffic. That means HTTPS, your, your audio video traffic, your um, SIP related traffic, high priority traffic. Then you may have some internet traffic or some bulk or peer-to-peer uh, -peer file transfer traffic, etc. Et means you can categorize the traffic in terms of high priority traffic, low, uh, mid priority traffic, low priority traffic, right? High priority traffic, it should be delivered. Then some sort of mid priority packet, uh, it should also be get delivered, but if you get dropped, there is no big impact. Then you have low priority traffic. Whenever you have congestion, you should uh, start dropping the low priority traffic first. Then you can go to the high uh, mid priority traffic and then only you can reach to the high priority traffic, right? So 
this mechanism that doing the classification and marking, etc., you can do it. And while you are doing some sort of congestion management, then you can go and apply this policy. So what congestion management is telling that uh, give the high priority queue to the high priority traffic. Okay. So what it is telling that within the hardware, there are different type of queue for the packet forwardings. So you have queue. Now, few queue are reserved for control traffic. Okay, control traffic, they are reserving few of the queue. So for example, Q0 is reserved for control traffic is nothing but network related traffic like OSP, BGP, uh, STP, those are control uh, network control traffic. Uh, if you go and break this control, uh, control plane queue, that means everything will get break. For example, OMP traffic. So they should be put inside very much high priority traffic. They are inside high priority traffic. It should never get dropped. Okay, then you may have uh, Q1, uh, say up to uh, Q2 and 3, so suppose this is Q2 and this is Q3, where you are sending the voice related traffic, where you are sending the video related traffic, where you are sending the high priority traffic, mission critical, business mission critical traffic, right? But before doing that, obviously you should have classification, right? So you have classification related to mission, mission critical. You should have mid range traffic. You should have, uh, oh, sorry for that. You should have low range traffic, etc. I Means you should classify the traffic. Then only you can go and apply to the queue, right? Or priority queues. So this is nothing but how you are manage the, managing the congestion. Congestion management. Two terms are very important. Congestion avoidance, congestion management. Then obviously you have classification and marking, etc. Now let's understand how QS is applied in our case, that is in SD1 Webtela. We know that whenever packets are delivered from one endpoint to other endpoint or one branch is to other branches or branch to DC, they they are delivering inside the IPsec tunnels. And whenever you have IPsec tunnel, you have some sort of overhead with that. So instead of, uh, apart from source and uh, destination IP, you have T-lock source and T-lock destination IP. You have the uh, header information for IPsec, right? This is normal delivery of packet before QS. But if you go and apply QS, you can see that we have classification and marking in the input direction. So there are two things when packet is coming hitting, this. suppose this is one of the router, packet is coming hitting here, then it's nothing but input. Then obviously you have some uh, policy coming from VSmart and route lookup will happen. And then you want to send the packet from outside. So you can go and apply the policy here. That will be your output. So in output, we can do and use the uh, ACL, uh, some scheduling, some rewriting of the packets, and then we'll go send to the wire, right? So this is very much flow for all the QS, not only sd and QS. If you go and check any QS, this is the flow, right? Now, what we need to do as uh, we should mention that we have to go create class map, we have to create policy map and we have to go and apply it. What I have done, I have break all these steps in various smaller, smaller steps, six different steps to go and apply this policy. Uh, and these are the steps. But before coming to this step, one very important thing I want to discuss here related to queues inside sd -WAN. Uh, uh, fabric. So inside SD WAN, we know that we may have virtual form factor or V edge, right? Um, cloud based V edge, or we may have hardware related V edge or C edge, right? 
this is hardware so what it is telling document is telling that in software based uh, edge devices you have only four queue starting with zero one two three that's it but in the hardware based system you have zero one two three four five up to seven means you have eight queue let me highlight you have eight q in hardware platform and you have four q in the software platform in all these queues means in all these uh, either it's a software or hardware platform q0 is reserved for control traffic like it's a very much high priority traffic because if you block this control q or q0 that means your network will go down it will never come up because of this uh, issue great so knowing that fact and all the theories that we have studied in our um, in in past 15 20 minutes how you can go write the qs policy and apply it now the lab for this i'm going to show you in the next session but today we'll go and discuss about theory six steps are there okay all these six steps you can see and these are steps you'll find it very easy so first of all you should go and map Means you, you have to go and do the classification. Like, is this HTTP traffic or is this voice traffic or is routing, etc. Et et but once you do the classification, you have to go and map that classification with Q. So you can see, map each forwarding class. These are forwarding class or class to output Q. So we can go and map from Q1. Q0 is reserved, so we can't use it. So Q1 up to Q3. Suppose it's a software-based uh, software based system. So you can go and map with Q1, Q2, Q3, right? So step number one, easy. Do the classification map with the Q. Step number two, use the scheduling uh, methodology. And just now we have discussed about the schedulers. Means we, we should go and do some sort of congestion management. So you can go and use the scheduling. So the forwarding class that you have created, you have to go and put a, uh, inside QS scheduler. And then step number third that group this scheduler. So then we should go and create QS map. And this schedulers, we have to go and map inside QS map. Obviously when you have a step number one, two, three, you can go and apply this Q map. And if it's optional that you can go and rewrite certain parameters, you can apply to the egress direction or output direction uh, going towards the ISP. Thing done. But you can see that there are two other steps. We can go and define the access list as well. And then we can go and apply this access list to the LAN interface. Actually, there are, this slide is actually very important. Uh, there are two places where you're applying the uh, QS. These devices, these device is connected with WAN. And most of the time where you are applying the um, QS policy, you are applying the QS policy to the WAN interface, right? Because WAN interfaces, you have to go and purchase. And for WAN interfaces, they are some, so, some sort of bottleneck, bottleneck inside the system because WAN, WAN speeds are maybe 100 Mbps, 200 Mbps, or maybe maybe 1 Gbps. But if you go and check your switch, you'll find one interface itself having 1 gig or maybe 10 gig. Right? So whatever speed we have in the LAN side, we don't have that much speed in the WAN side. Right? Both the speeds are different. So the policy that you can go and apply to the WAN, it's almost uh, different than whatever policy you're applying to the LAN. LAN policy and WAN policy, both are very different. And we'll, we'll discuss this in the lab section when I'll go and create the access list policies for the LAN and the QS and Q scheduler and the QS map for the WAN. Okay, so both are very interesting, we'll understand about that. Now I told you that there are six steps. Anyone can tell me all those six steps. Yep. What are those six steps? Previous step, huh? 
Yeah, six steps we have. First, you need to define the queue, right? Yeah, so queue to class map, or forwarding class map. Then you need to so you need to set the scheduler. The scheduler, yes. Then and inside have scheduler, map. we have to map step number one. Okay, great. Then three. Forgot this. Uh, forgot. Then you have to create QS map, right? Mm. And then you have to call a step number two. Inside that, you have to call the QS schedulers, right? Then we have some optional step, step number four, step number five. That is actually for the LAN side. So you have to go and create the ACL. Now this ACL is 100% different than the Cisco ACLs. Just the name is same, access control list, but everything is different, okay? And then finally, we have to go and apply this. So step number six is apply the QS map. Okay, so same thing I want to show here. Uh, you can see uh, that uh, we can go and create the class map. Inside class map, we have uh, BE to Q2, uh, AF, assured forwarding to Q3, assured forwarding four to uh, Q4, etc. Means we have the class, uh, to Q mapping, then you can see that uh, step number two. This is step number two where we have the schedulers. Inside that we are calling the class. We are defining the bandwidth buffer percent, and then uh, what is this congestion avoidance red drop, random early detection drop. We have options here. We'll see that later on. We have options there. Like that, you can see that we have. Uh, scheduler 2, scheduler 3, scheduler 4, and all these schedulers we are calling different, different classes, and then we are taking the action. Okay? Great. And then what is the step number 3? That you, you should go and create the QS map. And inside QS map, we are calling scheduler 1, 2, and 3. Very much it. And then step number six, directly you can go and apply step number six, where you can go and apply this QS map to the egress direction to the uh, to the physical interface inside VPN zero, right? Apart from that, we have to go and learn about the ACL. I told you that this access list are 100% different than Cisco ACL. So access list, ACL, ACL one, it's very much like we are creating the policy and that's why it is coming under localized data policy. So this ACL, QS, they are part of localized data policy. Yeah, so later on, I'll, I'll show you this example that uh, you can have this uh, QS configuration. You have your uh, ACL, you can see ACLs we are applying to VPN. So. VPN zero, we are applying the QS map, right? But apart from that, you have service side VPN where you can go and apply the ACLs, ACLs. All right, and in final stage is this that it's again optional that while sending the packet, you can uh, rewrite those rules and then you can send the packet to the egress direction. Some policy option as well that we can go and use the uh, policy. So you can go and define the policies. So P1 rate burst exceed and then that policy you, you can go and apply to the service side interfaces either in the uh, inside interface or the outside interface. Okay, so QS is something that uh, is a big topic, but I try to uh, break you down this in terms of QS, that I try to break it, this topic in a small, small chunks. And you find that you have six steps actually. And if you understand these six steps, you'll understand QS in sd one So class to Q mapping, then QS schedulers, then QS map, and then you have ACLs actually. ACL you can go and apply to the service side VPNs, right? And the Q map you have to apply to the uh, VPN zero. 
okay so you have ACL policies inside ACL and finally you're applying the rule those are the steps we have if you have any further question you can ask well VPN one VPN two those are service policy right service side VPN yes uh, what you're putting policy p1 policy it's a name here so we cannot only create the as uh, access control list but mm -hmm. we can go and create the policing as well you know policing and scheduling yeah. terms are there so we can go and policy the... policing right you're talking qs policy yes let me show you this how you can see and go to localize policy obviously we'll we have to learn about this you can see policy here and then you can go and create the qs policy name of the list you can go and define the burst exceed you know all those things so was say select uh, or if you want to remark etc rate leave it click add all the wheels need to say okay right, i'll go and use 800 bps so you can see that we have the policy and then this policy we can go and apply like this to vpn1 uh, interface how you will apply you know you have to go and edit the template okay once you go inside the vpn1 uh, device configuration template so let me go here to configuration and template and uh, let's see this service side vpn right the policy so you can go to service side vpn so vpn 10 let's click edit vpn interface what's the name of this vpn interface vpn 10 right i should go to dc vpn 10 interface and i'm unable to reach from there obviously so let's go back to the feature template oh, on top it was there let's search that template what was the dc something dc vpn 10 it is applied dc vh right and uh, which uh, two devices it, it, it is attached so let me quickly go here it's not this one let's go here uh, let me quickly create one copy because i don't want to change the configuration of uh, the existing one this is copy and i just wanted to show you that where it is so you can go here click click edit It's loading. It's loading still. So now you will see that you can go and apply the policy. Uh, that local policy we have related to policing, right? Service route is also there. IPsec route, NAT, route leak policy. So what you're trying to show, um, this part I'm not clear. Yeah, so clear what I'm telling that, uh, see, I'll show you that. So what I'm telling that, uh, you're asking what policy, right? Yeah. yeah. So this policy is part of configuration. If this is a part of policy, then you have to create policy and apply it. 
from we manage to be a smart and it will get applied but if it is a part of policy and it's part of interface uh, vpn policy that that means that you have to go to this interface and then you have to apply this right so mm -hmm. you can you can create this as a list but you have to apply this to the interface to that particular list so that's why I, I just try to show you this that if we have any, you can go to feature and you can check interface. Interface, I just wanted to show you interface template. That's my uh, idea here to show you interface, maybe interface 10 or 20, doesn't matter. But I just wanted to show you this interface. If you go here, over the interface, you should have option for local policy to be applied. So if you go down here, somewhere you'll see that we have this option. Let's see where it is. T lock, T lock, T lock, tracker, timeout, timeout. That you have to go and apply this policy. See, Ackles, you will apply here. So, QS map, see, you, you have to apply here. You can see. So, this section is not policy section. This section is what? Configuration section. So, inside configuration section, you are applying shaping, QS map, rewrite rule, ingress or egress Ackles, IPv4 Ackles, etc. Right? And then mm -hmm. you can see ingress policy, see ingress policy, egress policies. So if I go and it is asking the name. So we have created as a P1. So we can go and put it. If we are applying to ingress, ingress means indirection. Okay, so simply we have to go there and put name P1. Okay, uh, so no worries. Uh, we are going to check all these configuration related to QS and few of the configuration related to policing in our next section. Meanwhile, if you have any question, you can feel free to ask.